Hello, everyone. Today is Friday, January 28th. We are doing a very condensed version of our usual long form market analysis video series. So I'm traveling, I'm on the road here, and I wanted to just sort of fire up the charts, take a look at some of the big picture action takeaways from this week, but I am going to keep things short. And for those who do want more market analysis, this coming Monday, show you here, we are going to be doing another Smarter Trading live stream episode. I'm going to be having on my good friend Brian Lund. We're going to be talking about markets. We're going to be analyzing the market environment, kind of making sense of this disastrous sort of January start to 2022. So this will be going on during market hours. 1 p.m. Eastern this Monday. This is the link here on our YouTube channel. We're going to be going live and it is going to be centered around the questions, topics you guys want to talk about. So if you are interested in certain markets, have questions for us, please join us live January 31st, 1 p.m. Eastern. That's this coming Monday. So let's quickly take a look here at some of the high level action that occurred this week. So this is our smart trend filter view. So this is a custom indicator that measures price and volume across time. We're looking at a weekly time frame here. You can see that for the Russell 2000 in the bottom left, this is a weekly chart. We've got our second sort of sell signal here, which is basically continuing to indicate that sellers are in control here, breaking down trends on the longer term time frame. And then take a look in the top right. The NASDAQ finally joined the Russell 2000. We've got a fresh sell signal this week on the long term time frame. So again, this is the first time we've seen sell signals produced here since COVID back or the start of COVID back in uh, January or really February 2020. S&P 500 still hanging on, international stocks still hanging on as well. So I'll leave it there on the trend view. I want to talk a little bit about some of the price action specifically. I want to talk about this chart. This is the S&P 500 weekly view. And I really sort of simplified things with the two sort of important areas that I am keying off of right now. And you see them highlighted in these bands right now. First is 4,300 in the S&P 500. We successfully held that this week. And I know that is a, uh, a small victory, just given the fact of how much we have dropped in this market. But we did manage to hold on to this 4,300 level. We undercut it pretty dr dramatically this week. And also notice the volume that came in this week. Some of the highest traded volume that we've seen since going back to 2020. So we've got this high volume sort of reversal, retest and undercut and a successful hold and close near highs here on the S&P 500. So for the bulls that have gotten beaten up for this month, we've got a little bit of structure, a little bit of support here to now start to hang our hat on. And what we're essentially going to want to see now is the 4,300 level being held, these lows holding going forward and to build some type of move back up into this old range. The most sort of obvious level that I'm paying attention to is back up here around 4550. That's approximately the September highs. That's approximately the December and November lows. And if we were to get all the way back up there, that would essentially be a seven and a half percent bounce off of the lows. We could probably throw some fibs on here and I'm sure that's about a 61 percent retrace. And I am scrambling to look at where my fibs are because I never really, here they are. So if I look at this here, draw this impulse leg. So yeah, anywhere between the 50 and 61.8% retrace, you know, that seems to be kind of where I would be paying attention to on this potential bounce. And of course, if we go down to a daily chart, you know, you can see where that sort of coincides here is moving back up to this overhead supply. So what could occur here is what I'm paying attention to is just for the buyers to finally get a little bit of uh, reprieve here and get a little bit of a multi-day bounce, maybe take us back into that 4,500, 4,600 zone. And then, um, you know, that's where we're really, you know, rubber meets the road. We'll see how this all shakes out and we'll see just how much commitment there is up, you know, in this area. That's, again, my optimistic scenario, the sort the more disastrous scenario, of course, is that we just sort of, you know, chop around for a little bit, 
you know, another day or two of a dead cat bounce, roll over, break through 4,300 on the downside, and, you know, all bets are off, more downside to come. So both of those situations, of course, are, um, you know, something we need to keep an open mind about. I'm still generally concerned here about the market from an intermediate term perspective, longer term perspective. But in the short term, it does feel like, you know, we could probably get a little bit of a bounce here uh, over the next week or so. So that's my high level thinking there. You can also see if we were to look at Bollinger bands and you can see on the weekly chart again just the significance of this zone we totally you know undercut pierced through the lower two and 20 uh, Bollinger band here so that is again just a, a reference point a relative reference point of um, you know price volatility and and just to show sort of the extreme sell-off that we've seen here over the past three to four weeks. So that's where we held. We can go right through the markets. You can look at the queues, for instance. You can see uh, closing just at the lower Bollinger Band, again, pierced below it. And if we go down to, say, a daily chart here of the queues, let's clean up these Bollinger Bands and take a look at this weekly chart. You can see this was the breakdown we talked about a couple of weeks back as we started to fall down through this channel. Again, note the volume that came in today, so the really heavy sort of turnaround volume that we saw this week. So reversing from oversold levels, structurally, longer term, still concerned, short term, more constructive if you're active and if you're looking for momentum to um, you know look for some support in this market to kind of carry us through. And if we go to the Russell 2000, of course, this was the big breakdown. Again, significant volume coming in. And you can see, again, closing worst out of all of the major indices. We are not closing at highs here for the Russell 2000. We still managed to finish the week negative, And things still look um, pretty ugly here for uh, the small cap index. Now, last but not least, I wanted to just mention the dollar. U.S. dollar making a big move here. I don't know that there's too many people maybe paying attention to it or looking at this. This obviously has lots of uh, implications here to most other markets, frankly. The dollar sort of, you know, dictates moves lots of things, and the dollar is breaking out to fresh new highs. It consolidated for the past six or seven weeks, and now, again, fresh new highs. So the dollar on the move, that puts pressure on lots of things. That's definitely something to keep an eye on. So I'm going to leave it there for this week. And I will be back here on Monday with Brian Lund on the YouTube channel. Come hang out. Come say hi. 1 p.m. Eastern. And with that, I hope you had a good weekend. Thanks for tuning in as always. We'll be back on our normal schedule with our long form market analysis video series next Friday. So thanks so much and have a great weekend. Music.